Hello, hello, Flutter Hope developers, friends, creators. So today we will talk about a new integration about how to integrate Azure SQL database with your Flutter Flow application. And to learn about uh, Azure SQL database integration, we will build very simple but like uh, functional application where we will show products list, where we will uh, confirm some orders, save customer details, and then we'll show confirmation page with calculation of order amount using custom SQL queries to our Azure SQL database. So I already set my Azure SQL database. I already set my server. And next step, I will create a project in API Flow. API Flow allow us to connect different services, different data sources, and create API that allow us to connect Flutter Flow applications to that services to that databases. So I will create a new project. I will select Azure SQL as a service to connect, and I will name my project Azure SQL Demo. Click Create Project, and here we go. We have our project created in API Flow. Next, we will connect Azure SQL database to API Flow to be able to generate API for it. So when you create a Azure SQL integration project, you need to create a new connection for your SQL servers. To do so, first of all, as Azure SQL by default, do not allow uh, access from remote hosts from external uh, servers. You need to enable access for our um, uh, server through firewall. To do so, copy IP address that you see here, then go to your Azure and uh, you open your Azure SQL database. Here, select set server firewall command. And then you need to enable access from selected networks. Save this rule. And go to firewall, firewall rule section and add a new firewall rule. For example, we will name it an API flow and put this as start IP address and end IP address. Click save to save our rule. We saved our uh, rule for uh, SQL Server and now we can connect our SQL database. To do so, go to connection strings, copy SQL authentication string a scale authentication must be enabled for your database to be able to use it with our service. Next, go back to uh, integration project and paste your connection string here. So you can see system will automatically profile options for you and now you only need to put your password. So I put my password here and save my connection. After this, I can choose my database and define other options and select tables to work with and etc. and continue setup of my project. After I continue setup, after I finished my setup, I can publish my integration. So when I publish my integration, it's published and it's available to connect to Flutterfall. So now when I have my project set, I can choose my database and choose what tables I will allow access to, and I can choose operations that will be available for these tables. In our case, we will use uh, all three tables that I have in my database. It's uh, products, it's orders and order lines. So we will uh, show a list of products and we'll insert orders and order lines into the database. So first of all, let's publish our project and download open API definition. Open API definition will allow us to import API into our Flutterflow project. So I go to API call section in Flutterflow and will upload my open API definition. I have all operations here in my uh, open API definitions in my uh, API group. Uh, they will be imported right into my Flutterflow application. 
And next, what I need to do, I need to copy and add authorization header here to allow access to my API in API flow. This is security measure to protect uh, access to your API. So now I have all these operations and I can start work with my can start work with my API and can check what data I receive from uh, API through API flow. As you can see, we have some products in database. We have some product ID, name, price, category, and image. To simplify work with this data, I will create a new data type in my application. So I go to data types and will import, uh, will generate data type from JSON. I will call it product and will insert this JSON data here. Click, sorry, click create. And it will create a data type for me. Just only what I will change, I will remove this image field and will add a new image field uh, with type uh, image pass because by default it was string, but I want to use this data type uh, with image pass, uh, with image pass field to be able to show image in list. So next, what I do. I parse my uh, response of my API call to product and will mark that this is a list and I click save. I saved my changes and now all my returned products will be parsed to data type product. Next, I go to my products list screen and will bind this um, will uh, bind this query to backend query for my list view. So I select my API call list products and will confirm that I want to build that query. I want to create that query. And next, what I want to do, I want to use the query to populate list of child elements to generate list of child elements and I will use list product response okay and here I will name it API products save okay now I will bound all my uh, elements all components of um, this list elements to required field so i will start with image and i want to bind it to data structure field image i want to bind it i want to bind text uh, this will be product title I use data structure field name now uh, let's uh, set some replacement name okay i will show category here Category. Okay, and I will build my text combination where I use dollar and add text and data structure field price. Okay, great. So now I have all these all these products. Uh, they will be shown on my page. What I want to do next, I want to actually build my order uh, to uh, create ability to save order items into database. So how we will do this when I click a uh, button, I will check if we already have some uh, order uh, created, if not, we will create a new order. If order is created, then we will add uh, new order lines into database. So let's proceed with order creation. So now what we want to do, we want to create a new order if no order exists and add a new order items, new order lines when we click this button. 
So first of all, to track if order exists or not, we will use app state variable and I will create it and I will name it order ID. It will be type of integer and by default it will be zero. So by default my uh, order ID is zero and this will show me that my uh, order is not created yet. Next, what I will do, I will need to update a body of my API call and to send uh, email name and status into my database. So uh, actually for creation, I don't need email and name yet. I will send on this status and this status will be new status. So I will send only status and will receive back my order ID. And let's check how my order look like. My order have some fields, have some fields. So uh, we can in my, at least my orders, for example, and see how they look like. And now we will create a new data type. We will name it order and we'll use this JSON sample to create data fields. So we will have all these data fields from our database. And now we will parse a result of our create order, parses data type, data type order. So now when we create order, it will be returned from our database as order data type. Same for order lines. So when we will create order lines, we need to send data, actual data. So we want to uh, put here variables for every field. We will use product ID. It will be uh, integer by default, let's set zero product name. It will be string simply name, then we want to send count, send count, it will be integer one by default, price, this will be product price, we will use double and zero as default, and amount will be calculated automatically by my table because I set this as computed field, it will multiply price by count and for order ID, we will send also integer example zero. So now we need to map these fields to our JSON body. We will map all these fields, count here and price here. Amount will be automatically calculated, so I don't require it. And order ID will be here. So I save my changes. And if I don't want to call my database or, or I don't have data yet in my database where I can find information about how my model look like, I can go to API flow and check here uh, API actions, which will contain actually a sample of data that will be returned from database. As you can see, I have a sample of data here. I can copy it, go to, uh, go to quarter flow data types and create order line data type. So now I will create this order line data type. Okay, great. And I will parse my create new order lines, parses data type, order line, save. Okay, let's return to our UI. So now when I click this button, I want to check if my order already exists or not exists. So I will add condition here, single condition, first value, uh, I will check my app state order ID, confirm, uh, equals to, and here I will put zero. So if my order ID zero, I don't have any order. 
and I need to create the order. So I will add action and will call my backend and will call my create order action. Create order, create new order. I don't need to put anything here and I will call it API order. And after it's a seed, I need to save, save actually to app state. So I need to update app state and set order ID, set value and values here will be uh, action output, API order uh, as data type, data structure field, order ID. As you remember before, we already parsed this API call. So I have here my order as data type. And after, after I created order or if it already saved, I can create a new a new order item new order item create new order line variable product id we will set to api product item data structure field product id yes uh, product name API product item data structure field name. I duplicate name just to uh, simplify later, you know, uh, work with data in database. Sometimes you have this extra fields in your database just to simplify queries. Okay. And we have count here. I will just put one and order ID. We will set equal to our app state order id so now we have this api order line and we saved our order line great great so we saved our order line we created our order if we required and bound that order line to that order uh, kind of tricky, um, kind of we have some branches here and such, a, but it works as expected. We create order, then we say order ID, and then we say order line for the order. What we want to do next, I want actually to uh, compute uh, total amount of order lines for my order, update amount for order, and show that in my UI show that I have such sum in my in, in current order, such amount. So to do this, we will use custom flow and I will show you about this in the next section, how to work with custom flows in API flow. So when we created our order and created our order line, we want to calculate amount of order, current amount of order, and for example, display it in the submit order button. To do so, I will create a new app state variable and we'll call it order total and we'll make it double data type and zero by default. Then I will go and uh, change a label of my button to combine text. Here it will be submit order as before plus dollar sign plus value of my app state order total. So I will show total of order in my button. But to calculate actual amount of order, to calculate sum of uh, my order lines, I will use custom SQL script. And to call it, I will use custom flow in API flow. Custom flows are very uh, powerful features that allow you to run custom SQL queries in SQL Azure or other databases that support custom flows. And I will create a new API call. I already copied and uh, API URL from here, I will name it calculate order total. I will use get request. Also, I need to add authorization header here to not forget it. And I will add the query parameter. I will call it order ID. And we will use variable. We will create that variable. 
this will be variable of type integer. By default, it can be zero. So now I can send my request here and send some test value and see what it will do. I send my test and as you can see, API flow for now returns to me some sample response. And now I can continue setup of my Azure SQL database step. So I will select my connection, I select database, and here I will, I will create my script. Uh, we will use some amount as amount from orders lines where order ID equals, and as you can see, I have this parameter here in query API flow received it. So I just insert it and I have my script prepared. And now I will select format result as single row or value because I return only amount field. I do not re return data set. If you will have data set, you need to select many rows. So I publish my query. And now I can call it from Flutter flow. Check how it works. So you can see it return amount field. And now I can use that amount field to, uh, to write it into my uh, order total uh, app state field. So now here after I created a new order line, I will add another action. We need more actions and I will use calculate order total set variable order ID app state order ID and the result will be API order total. Now when I have this API order total, I will add action and will update my app state order total set value and value to set, I will use action output API order total, JSON body, and here I will use JSON pass amount. I will use JSON pass because for one field, I don't want to uh, create a data type. So, and I can put zero as default, default variable. So now when my order line created, I view call calculate order total and it will update app state and set updated amount of order into my app state variable. Great, we finished with logic of this screen and let's check how it works. So now when we submit our order, we want to navigate to next page. We want to navigate to customer profile page where we will uh, fill data of our customer. And here we have full name field and email field. And on submit order, we also can uh, change here our uh, text, submit order. As you remember, we bound uh, app state order total. Okay. Good here. So now when we click submit order here, what we want to do, we want to update our order and save, uh, save our customer details. So here we will go to update orders action and we will update our order. Uh, as you can see, update action actually have different uh, format of URL. It already have order ID variable. And here we will update it with our, uh, with few new fields. So we will change its status to submit it. We will add email field, we will add name field, created field, we don't need it here because it's auto-calculated anywhere. So we will create a variables for name field, it will be string default name, we will create email field, it will be string to, and we will create amount field. We want to submit amount of our 
order by default it's zero so we have all these variables here we have all these variables we replace placeholders and we have a order formatted so now now we can also mark it to be parsed as an order i'm not sure if you will use this but just in case so now let's go here into our application screen and add uh, we don't want here validation i suppose we will add condition uh, we uh, will add action uh, i call and we will call we'll call update order we'll set order id equal to our app state order id we'll set name to widget state full name we will set email to widget state email and we will set amount to our app state order total as you remember we fill it from if we fill it from previous step so when it's saved we will proceed to next step and we'll show order success screen and all order success screen we have it here we will just replace this value with combined text dollar sign and add app state order to top okay okay confirm confirm so we will use this page to fill customer profile and then we will update our order and show our order success page let's check how it works so we have our app here and i will add some goods into my basket i will create a new order let's create something few products next i click submit order i fill my name my email and submit order and i see success screen all data saved to database and now like we can proceed with uh working with this order and fulfilling it also you can send any data you can query any data using api flow i hope this video will help you understand how to work with azure sql databases how to connect them to a flutter flow and will allow you to create functional applications using flutter flow using api flow platform new videos are coming so please subscribe to our channel like videos pay attention to other videos we have in our channel for today thank you for your time and have a nice day